I'm Nikki Valencia. I grew up in SoCal Orange County, Garden Grove. I was born in Santa Ana. Growing up in that environment was very, it's very different than any other part of SoCal because it's very Republican. So you're very much, being half black, I was forced to represent only black people and being the only black person in class, but also, especially because of the time. There wasn't the push in education on certain things like language that we have more now that basically I had to endure. So there was, that was my upbringing, constantly dealing with microaggressions, constantly having to explain things that I don't know as someone that the only black people I knew was my own mom's side because it's Orange County. It's not really, there's that economic barrier that prevents black people from being in Orange County, let alone the police state that's very normalized because I grew up feeling like police was safe. Like, you know, they're the good guys, but you know, as you get older and especially when you get out of Orange County, you realize just the way things are. So that was my upbringing. I come from a very, a very liberal black mom and a very Christian, conservative, Hispanic family on my dad's side. And that's just pushed to bear with me and my connection with um, my, his, my my Afro Mexican culture, like because they're uh, they're mestizos, my dad's sides. So they want to be accepted in whiteness so much, and I've seen that bear with like they'd use Jesus against me because I'm trans, and you know I was surprised that my black side was very accepting, but it was my my Christian Hispanic conservative side that was just not having it. There's no entirely machismo is what my dad's side embodied. You know I'm completely against what they uh, had expected for me. So I would say adulthood has me evolving into myself and also seeing that my experience that was, as I would call uh, anecdotal, my anecdotal experience is not the full scope of what Mexican and Latino folks and Latine uh, folks are, you know. So coming here, I've learned how intersectional our community is becoming and how more vocal and that there are folks, uh, we are the folks that are really trying to push the narrative and change our own generation and undo a lot of ignorance of colonization and brainwashing and colorism and wanting to have a seat at the table with white people, all those type of things that um, colonization has done to us. My it means to me it's pushing against the narrative that we, especially uh, minimum color, that we, we don't belong in you know bright colors or certain color palettes. Because for the longest, I remember people saying you know that's more for white people, pastel colors, and that you know we can't wear that. But I'm pushing against that. It's fighting against um, Euro beauty. Eurocentric beauty standards. It's 100%, that's what you've noticed in my work. You can go through all my works and you won't find any blue eyes. I purposely exclude the color blue because I don't really see us people of color that and I'm not gonna use some like very anecdotal thing to go justify like, no, I don't see that in my people, so I'm not gonna include it in my art. It's definitely, in its beauty, it's also I feel powerful because it's, and just people in general, children are not used to seeing um, those types of depictions of of the elegance of women of color in ways that, due to white supremacy, does not allow us to be shown in that light. Let's say like 1920, my art has shifted from being just anime to having anime elements. So I kind of blend in surrealism, um, stylized with the anime like touch to it. So like my eyes are still anime, maybe the roundish face shape. But other than that, I kind of give my own touch. So like I actually draw noses that anime typically doesn't. So I enjoy showing that or like our lips, you know, a lot of my work is juicy lips and highlights in the lips. So definitely I have this, it's like a combination, like it's just a combination of like anime and surrealism with Afrocentric. The way my art is now, honestly, it was music. It was SZA's album Control, basically uh, created the style I had now. It was the impiff, it's very stereotypical, but Angela Davis was, will always be my foundation. She's the reason why I went natural in high school. You know, before I even knew who she was, I just saw like a little clip of her and then just cut off my relaxed hair and just went natural. So Angela Davis, uh, Nikki Giovanni, uh, and then also when it comes to like digital creators, because before I really got into theory, I was on like black feminists like YouTube. So like creators like Joel Z or For Harriet were 
basically the foundation for a lot of um, the online black feminist like thought and yeah so they definitely radicalized me showing that the man is capable um, whatever you put your mind to i hope that um, my art shows like i said like earlier um how we can be in very colorful or you know the, the descriptions that they only give to white people as, or especially white women elegance and grace and softness and gentle like if you want to like you basically, and it's not saying like that's to strive for, but if you have the idea of you want to go for something, you can. And also just like when it comes to the activism aspect, um, don't wait for someone to do something. Do not wait for someone to do something. Stick up, stand up and make it happen because I was a nobody like, before I did this. I was just someone that was just, you know, I was a roommate because that's how I described myself as a roommate to like, you know, 2020 happened and I got tired and I did something. I, I want to show that it's possible, you know, you, you know, if you put the work in it, um, you know, stick, stand up. So I would say the biggest thing is, you know, not waiting for someone to save you. <laughs> um, stick up, stand up for yourself, be the first before you wait for her. Cause if you're going to wait for white people, you're going to wait forever. <laughs> um, so as far as the activism, if you want to be engaged or help or, Get, get involved um, following just the people that do things here especially orgs like black humboldt um, find out who does things first is just following us knowing where we're at or how to can, get, in, get in contact with us another thing is educating yourself educating yourself uh, YouTube is a great free resource, I will definitely say, as someone that makes YouTube videos. Uh, definitely, uh, there's so many topics, and I feel like if there's a question you have, you can type in that and might find a video that's related to that or just all about that. So definitely being educated will help a lot because incompetent allies is not really what we need. Some art-wise, I say practice, and not just practice, but practice with intention. Practice, like, what is your goal? Let's say you, you suck at hands, you suck. There's something you want, but to get that, you have to break down that into, like, a equation. So if you want to do portraits, you're going to have to, and, and that includes not just your face, but sometimes the full body. You, you're going to have to take, you know, pra uh, study sessions, whether that's on, on your own or in school. So I'm a fine arts major, so definitely you find your path or your way to set you because it's in a way like art I would say is like math because it's there's like a there's science to it um the science is geometry it's very like geometry it's a very particular like intentional like shapes you break it down so find your way to be real with yourself and your art and what your attention is and practice with intention um my art I would say reflects me being uh, unconventional and um, me choosing to be a nonconformist, I would say. Um, I definitely, as far as with me, like it expresses like, I see my pride in myself and my pride in my people. Um, since I intentionally withhold white people in my art <laughs> in blue eyes and certain things like that. Um, so I would, it would show that it shows the pride of the beauty and the joy and um, just showing that also like I'm in touch with my interests and that's why people when they see my work they kind of think of anime so I would say a combination of anime pride and a lot of big hair.